So, look, man, today's episode, we got the one and only DJ Kid, man. Yes, sir. Platinum Records. And we're going to show, he's going to talk about actually how he got to that level because uh, it wasn't always like that, man. He's going to talk about, he talks a lot about his purpose and a lot of the things you can do if you're in the position in the music industry or any other industry and what you got to do and what you want to be doing to find somebody, to find a mentor that's going to help you take you to the next level. Sure. Um, he dropped a lot of game, man, for business music for sure if you're in the music industry and yeah. they're going to talk about a really uh, badass project that they got going on here in the central valley yeah. it's happening tomorrow night but it's going to keep coming back baby so um a lot of good shit today yeah i'm telling you guys man if you guys if you guys haven't tapped in with kid yet you're going to find out exactly what he's doing today exactly what he has done and the crazy part about it man is this is a young guy man this young guy's accomplished so much so far and it's so early in his career but like when we start dropping the, the accomplishments he's done he's gotten platinum all the artists that he's worked with some of the largest artists in the in in the industry right now the baby got kodak or you got offset coming up right tons of stuff got going on but uh kid what do you think are they gonna enjoy the episode today of course we're giving off real game Good, lots of love. You feel me? I'm in Visalia. You feel me? I'm on the number one podcast in the world right now. So I got to give the game, you feel me, back to y'all. So tap in, run it back, and run it back again. And send it to your mama and your girlfriend and your cousin, you feel me? Let them feel this love that we got in here with us. All righty, guys. What's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Always His Podcast. My name's Anthony. I'm joined by my friends today. It's your boy Danny, baby. Back again, Nate. And uh, today we also got our other boy from our hometown. We got a and Let's go, y'all. a and the official. And like always, man, every time we bring you another episode of Always His Podcast, we always promise to bring you guys the aces of every single industry, man. And today's no different. Uh, today's a little special, man. We got the ace of the music industry. Let them know why, Dan. Like, my boy DJ Kid here. Man, he's produced for some of the top, some of the best artists that are in the game right now. We got people like the baby, Lil Wayne, Lil Yachty, and what other, what other one, man? DDG, man. At the top of the top is the baby, Lil Wayne. That's in the sentence. Two hottest rappers in the game. That's it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's all we need, man. So we got him on the podcast today. We appreciate you so much being on, man. Let's get into the pod. Thank you for being on, man. For sure. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. And, and real quick, dude, something I want to point out. Like you're super young, bro. What, you're 24. Yeah, 24. 25 November 28. 25 November 28th. Yeah. Save the date. That's cool, bro. So, like, it's 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 fucking nuts, dude. Because, and uh, obviously, the music game, you know, some people make it, some people don't. Um, I, I mean, you know, you're you're in the middle of it. So, I want to I want to get into like where did it all start, bro? I know that you were going to you were born here in Santa Clara, yeah, and then you moved out to the Carolinas mm -hmm. and you started DJing in college. But how did how did you get connected, bro, with with like the, the baby thing? Like, how did that? How did you make it to the next level? Because the reason why I ask is I feel like in the music game, sometimes people have the talent. But they just can't fucking make it to the next level for whatever reason that is, you know. So I, what allowed you to take it to the next level? So even even before I started DJing for Baby, I was DJ Kid, the artist, the engineer, the producer, like the, the jack of all trades, like Auntie, you feel me? Pretty much in like any pocket that I could be in and, and being consistent. Sometimes I say to people, um, it could be the consistent artist, you feel me, that's, that's not so trendy or have the best music like someone that got the best music in your city but they're consistent and they got a game plan and they're like in their journal planning everything out uh music rollouts and they win through hard work and dedication mm. and consistency other than so that's what i was on though like i prided myself in being the hottest young dj superstar producer in my city but also being on top of my stuff like on my calendar late at night time blocking what am i doing in the morning i'm waking up thanking god and then i'm getting into the rest of my day so consistency and me and baby bumping heads like in every lane as an engineer as a dj then as a producer you feel me and we went platinum yeah it's fucking they go platinum man it's yeah, crazy cool well, one of the things i want to touch on too bro i know that something's cool about your story that i like is uh i know you in college didn't really get along too well right can you tell us a little ah, bit about that bro tell us I, about that bro i, I want to say i don't even <laughs> want to step on uncg like that but uncg they pretty much kicked me out of the school because i brought too many people to an event i did with the school and it was called Fried Chicken Wednesdays. So I'm like bringing all of the, the locals that's around the school, you feel me, all the minorities out from their dorm rooms and um, DJing, pretty much having like a, a, a fun time. Like the girls are dancing, twerking, partying. What you what you do at a party, right? Yeah. You feel me dancing? Man, they send like the, the dean of students down to shut down the party. It's too many people here. They they throwing ass. They I'm like, yo, hey. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm just the DJ, you feel me? So I tell them to hop on the microphone, like, tell them the event is over, you feel me? They whoop, whoop, say what they had to say. And I'm like, y'all, I'm sorry. 
And then uh, they pretty much charged me for like the electricity at the school, it took me to like court with the school. And then ended up a few years later asking me to come back and be their official DJ. So it's like, ah, yeah. whatever, yeah. Did, did, you, did you accept that invitation, no, bro? No, <laughs> no. I'm like, on to the next. Y'all actually did what I needed to happen in my life. Y'all let me go. And I started believing in myself more like, okay, school, I would say school was my plan B. You feel me? But I, I'm like, thank you for pushing me back to my plan A of being DJ Kid or KID for real, for real. Yeah, so. no, that's money, bro. And I understand the week after, it was like a week after, a couple weeks after you went on the road, right? With yeah. That was your first tour. Immediately. Yeah, so that that's was crazy. crazy. It was almost like God's plan. I'm like walking in my steps for real, for real. It's like, okay, maybe school wasn't for you, bro. <laughs> Let me get on the road yeah. and figure it out through like entrepreneurship. Bro. Yeah. And that's crazy, bro, because I feel like a lot of times people are always waiting for a sign, right? Like they're on the right path. Yeah. They're in the right career. It's not just a hobby. They can actually turn into a career. Mm -hmm. And people watching at home, man, I don't think they really understand and really can really grasp that. Literally, like, dropped out of college. They work out. Very next week, man, you went on tour with the baby. And, and from there, it's history, man. You kind of yeah. went platinum, did all the stuff you've done. And I think it's badass to see. And yeah. it's inspiring for us, man, especially being as young as you are. For sure. Just uh, understanding and knowing that it doesn't really matter your age. It doesn't matter anything like that, bro. As long as you put the work in, as long as you're willing to grind with it, you know, consistency comes. Nah, yeah, that's a blessing. And for real, for real, consistency and just being you and loving your craft you feel me like nobody can take you out of your lane because that's what you focused on you feel me so i was very prideful in that like waking up thanking god every day and like before i do anything else it's like god lead me in the in the steps that i need to go in you feel me like your will first you feel me? So, manifest it as well yeah yeah for sure mm -hmm. that's real shit, dude and real quick because i know you said that you know you got kicked out of college and then you went on the road with the baby mm -hmm. but how did the i know you said that you said consistent and you were the you know the hottest fucking guy in the in the city yeah. but how did you link up with the baby because the baby what, what year was this when you this got, was like 2018 so crazy story um his dj dj jayhawk that's really a, a close homie of mine he pretty much called me like Bro, I can't make it. First of all, I was I was already booked on an event to DJ. ECU homecoming event. Um, shout out to my boy Stump. He pretty much booked me for the event. We we split in the numbers, bringing like college kids to the show. The baby was booked as the artist for the show. Um, DJ Jayhawk, he calls me he like, yo kid, I can't make it. Da da da. Can you DJ for me? I'm like, ah, I might be able to DJ for you. In my head, I'm like, bro. You shouldn't have said that, bro, because I'm ready right now. <laughs> I'm ready right now. All of, all of bro music lined up in a folder like the baby said, list. you feel me? So, oh, no, that was that was kind of like a door that opened that I didn't know was right there for me. So I just walked into it. You feel me? Downplayed it a little bit because I knew I was going to overachieve. You feel me? True, really but, the yeah. opportunity, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as it came up, yeah. ready for it. We're at talk. And I'm like, okay, baby finna pull up. I know I can do everything else underneath the sun, but let me focus on this crab, you feel me, that's going to get me in the dough. Yeah. Me? Something that I already loved, which was DJing. So. Yeah, and that's key, bro. I, I think kind of what you mentioned, bro, is that, I mean, you were ready for the opportunity, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not like, because, I mean, some people, they want the opportunity, but they're not even ready for it yet. You know, yeah. they're not consistent. They're not doing what they got to do. So I think it's really key, bro. Like, that part of the story, I, what I took out of it was that, like, fuck, you've been putting in the work, and that's it was sure. just like, you know, God knocked on your door, and you were like, Real yeah, talk. I got gotcha. you. Real <laughs> talk, because <laughs> how do we know if we're ready for real? Like, yeah. Nobody's ever really ready, you feel me? Like, right. so just be ready, like, be prepared at the end of the day. Work on your shit, yeah. Yeah. Sure. I want to take it back to the mindset of that, too, bro. So, like, obviously, you get the call. What goes through your head, bro? Like, you're about to step on stage, mm -hmm. the light, the bright lights, you see the stage out there. Like, yeah. you're going to perform with someone. Had you listened to the baby before, obviously? For sure. Probably, right? This was when baby had like 50,000 followers on like Instagram. So, mm -hmm. He was popping in the city, had like a lot of traction, a lot of tension. He had dropped like up the street and today that was going crazy in Charlotte. Um, but like, bruh, I don't know. It's always been a thing to me. Like, I don't want to say I catch like butterflies and nothing like that, but it's like, I know this is my calling. So I'm, I'm ready for it. Mm -hmm. when, it when it's here, it's like, okay, I knew this was coming eventually. Let me walk into that and stand on business. You feel me? Yeah, and be who I am type. Wait, was there ever a point where you any guy like, those butterflies kind of got nervous you had to reel it back and kind of how did you reel it back in um i would say kind of recently for for real like i never i never look at my my career or like my success from like a third person a third person point of view so to say i'm, I'm always just like grinding like head down working so i never look at the grand scheme of things but lately i was just reflecting like okay what got me here you feel me let me like rinse and repeat and then i just start paying attention to like Mm, maybe those aren't butterflies, but like, you know, 
you were meant to do this in every situation, bro. So like, let's go. Every time it's an opportunity for me, I'm like, let's go, let's do it. You feel me? No questions. If I feel like I can't do it or if I can't do it, I'm walking into it regardless. Yeah. Because if it's for me, it's for me. If it's not, then I shouldn't be here. And yeah. it's gonna let me know. I feel like it's true, bro. Always trusting in the divine purpose, your 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 purpose in life. I mean, everything will always figure itself out. Well, I mean, I'm a firm believer in that. Take yeah. the risk too, because like you said, sometimes you're not ready for that shit. What I be you, saying? You gotta jump in. Yeah, kid always talking about like rolling the dice, being a risk taker. Real talk. If you don't do that, you just never know. Like it's fifty fifty. Yeah. You know what, what would I mean? you What would you say to someone at home, bro? That's like they're mixing beats at home. They're trying to get involved in the music scene, but they don't really know, bro. Like if they're meant for it. They don't really know if, if this is going to be a hobby, if it's a passion, or if it's something that can actually make the passion out of the career. Like, what would you say to them to get their foot in the door? First, I would say, if you don't know, you feel me, that's that's a question you need to take up with yourself first because before you get the rest of the world believing in your vision, like I went through this recently, like three months ago, before you get the rest of the world to believe that you a superstar, you got to be a superstar to yourself. You looking in the mirror, it's like me against me at the end of the day. When I look in the mirror, it's like, yeah, you that guy, you feel me? Let's go convince the world <laughs> at the end of the day. So definitely stay locked in with yourself, first things first. Bring it to the world, package it up the right way. Even if you don't know what you're doing, you feel me? Walk into your purpose if you know this is what you are, you feel me, called to this universe to do. Great that's talk, real man. shit though. That is real shit though. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of taking a step back because I think we both, I think everybody here, you know, that's amounted to shit. You kind of go through that process. Like, like it'll be, it could be day one today or day one, day 365 next year you feel me but it's like who finna win this battle today i wake up in the morning it's like let me win the day then i might be able to win the week and i might win a month then i'm gonna win a year you feel me but i gotta start right now when i wake up and i'm in my brain it's like me versus me mm, the doubts who who i might not be i'm gonna push that to the side that's real shit dude you're dropping some motivation shit like some 20 it's about ass bro because yeah. i feel like a lot of people at home too like part of the motivational step, step for dropping not a lot of people have seen this side of kid right like they've for only sure. seen the high turn up in the club. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah. That's what they've seen. So I feel like it's really cool to the viewers, the people, everyone board. watching at home, bro, to see like, mm -hmm. you're not just a DJ, bro. You're not just a music guy. You're a business guy. You're an entrepreneur. Sure. You're, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a lot more to me. You feel me? It kind of take you to, to get a little closer to me or like situations like this to understand what I'm really on. But first things first, like people don't really ask me. I'm, I'm here. I feel like my purpose is to bring people to God's kingdom at the end of the day. You feel me? Through music, through love, through what I feel like God put on my life and, and that's me closing my eyes and, and feeling the vibrations in music, you feel me? Or like getting up on stage and um, feeling the joy and like making people dance or being able to come to a concert and through me helping you vibe and what you hear me say to like put your hands up, you're like, stop thinking about whatever you got going on at the crib, you feel yeah. me? So. Well, what's your, why music, bro? What's your favorite part about music? My favorite part about music? I don't know. I wouldn't even just say it's, like when I think about like who Kid is, it's not just about music. It's about like being able to give this vibe that I got inside of me to you. Like I know I want to be positive all the time, even though when things could be negative, but I choose in this moment to play like a positive song. You feel me? And I want like that energy to go up into the crowd. Yeah, you feel me? Like I, that's a real thing to me. You feel me? Like I'm up on the stage and I'm like, put your hands up. If you feel like my vibe is wrong, you're going to look at me like, Nah. <laughs> what we doing? The hell no. What we doing? Why am I putting my hands up and you up here looking goofy or like you playing a song that's not what I'm on? on the same you energy. Yeah. We keep bringing up God too, and I think an interesting part too is music translates to gospel. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So that's For one sure. way that people can praise God is through mm -hmm. through gospel and through you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's really good that you tie in the two together and you yeah. bring God in with your music. That's too. being real, bro. Like. That's my core, if I'm being real. Like, I grew up in a church. My grandmother, she was a pastor, Pastor Thelma Gordon. Like, multiple churches, churches. I was playing the drums, you feel me? Like, shaking a tambourine in the front, but like, paying up, man, it was so crazy. I was always paying attention to who was in the pews next to me, though. Like, how they, how they interacted with how my grandmother or whoever the pastor was, um, like, speaking to them, how they received the message, like, what made them react a certain type of way. I don't know, I was always like, looking at the analytics of like how people move mm. and stuff like that. So I feel like as I grew up, eventually my mom told me like, I was an artist first, kid, you should start DJing. I started DJing and I started applying what I saw kind of in, in church too though. Better transfer that energy. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really is bro. If someone's ever been in a church, like 
Church is popping too, bro. Like, yeah, fact. Depending on church, where you go, like you, you might just not. Uh, man, 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 listen. Nah, <laughs> <bro? laughs> facts. But you can you can go to like this church. It's called like Elevation Church, bro. They playing music or mm-hmm. or Transformation Church. They playing music. You feel me? Speakers, eight oh eight thumping. I'm like, mm-hmm. that's the vibe I like to be. <laughs> I'm in there like, hey Jesus, yeah, what's up? Let's go. That's how worship is supposed to. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like even speaking on that though, I feel like some people don't like talk about that other side of the universe. Like you can. Man, we all go through everyday, everyday life stuff. But like, you can you can be a Christian or you can be a Catholic or whatever your religion is, still worship your God or whoever is over your your life and and live a regular life at the same day and go through the trials and tribulations and the good and the bad. You feel me? I feel like some people don't really speak on that or like see what that can do for you. Like we real people. Everybody's not the pastor. You mm-hmm. feel me? No, that was going to be my next question, bro, on that same topic where, like, for me, myself, bro, I grew up in church. Mm-hmm. And, like, I know my family, still to this day, bro, they're all in the church. Like, I went going, like, Monday, Friday, Sunday, all, 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 all kinds of church, bro. But, yeah. like, one question I had for you, bro, was did you ever get any kickback because the genre of music, because, like, rap and R&B, mm-hmm. because your family came from church? I would say sometimes, like, I said my grandma, my Rolling Loud said the other day, she was like, why you always cussing? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like it's just it's just coming out of me, grandma. My bad. I'm gonna tighten up. I'm gonna get better. But um, man, my bad. What was the question? I definitely just yeah. Did you did you ever get any kickback with your family going oh, from church? The yeah, genre other, you do? other than my grandma, not really. You feel me? Because everybody knew me to be like the guy that kind of like I don't want to say split because I'm a I'm a firm believer in Christ. Period. But like, music is music. At the end of the day, you feel me? Like. Y'all can't be mad at me because it's other people that go through a different lifestyle, you feel me, but still believe in God, too, maybe on their end. Like, that like world looks totally different. I feel like a big part of it is just your relationship, right? Like, you have your own relationship with God, and every single other person does, too, and I feel like that's what's important, right? Yeah, for sure, because that's, that's what you're chasing. You're chasing to figure out who God is at the end of the day, you feel me? And I'm figuring them out through music. You feel me? So, oh, bro, for sure. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts, bro, on, like, artists – do our artists that start off maybe R&B start off rap like maybe a Kanye West right mm-hmm. when he, he transitioned over to creating Donda and kind of the spiritual album that he did like that mm-hmm. what's your thoughts on that and why, do, why don't you think they get as much support as maybe he did on some of the other albums mm-hmm. I don't know it's maybe because of the the period the season that we in right now the trendy stuff that's what's in the style you feel me like we're kind of trained to listen to that already you feel me it's already on our brain like we know Mm, what's a what's a hit to us? You feel me? Crank that you. You feel me? Like, is it is it they kind of me? Ah, like is it God did by DJ Khaled? Are we really listening to that before? Like, were we dancing to that in the club? So I feel like it's a certain few people that are chosen to like switch the narrative. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, can show you I live this lifestyle, but I'm with the turn up too at the same time. So I don't know. I like I like what Kanye is doing. Kanye is Kanye. You feel me? Anybody else that just walk in a purpose and don't care about the world. I'm like a post, get off of Instagram, you feel me, and not care about what's in the comments type of dude. For real. I feel like that's what the biggest artists and the biggest just successful people in life do, right? I mean, I feel like they, the most important opinion to them is, is themselves, their God, their, their family. But aside from that, bro, nothing, nothing else should matter, right? Yeah, for sure. Because it's like people get caught up in comparing. If I'm comparing myself, like me to you, I'm thinking about the wrong thing for for it should be me against me every single day or i'm like he got that many platinum plaques why don't i have them right now when in my journey i could be about to get a hundred more platinum plaques than this guy i'm comparing myself to right now yeah so and real quick dude i want to say on like the music topic uh, i want to shift into a little bit of like the business part of it um mm-hmm. for a couple of reasons one um there's a lot of people that want to get into music and that, I know that there's a shit ton of ways that you can be involved in music on the back end or obviously on the mic, you know, and you've done a, basically all of them, you know. Sure. So real quick, dude, when you when you like DJ for like the, for example, like the Rolling Loud set, like what is what does the DJ do, bro? Because honestly, I'm, like, I don't really know what the DJ does at like on, on a set like Rolling Loud. Yeah. So from from the sound checks, you feel me? Pulling up and being coordinated with your, your dancers or making sure you got your set list from your artists like me and baby it might not be a set list you feel me like i might make a set list right before the show but like i'll uh i'll I'll take the attempt to be like yo what type of direction you want to go to kind of making sure everything is in order because if the dj isn't tidied up and and organized the the whole show is like for sure gonna go to waste you feel me because it got to go through us first 
before I hit Rolling Loud speakers, what's coming off of your computer? You mm. feel me? So, so you basically, as a DJ, you kind of have the script of the songs that mm. he's going to be performing. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, me and Baby, nah, not really. Like, we, we've we been rocking out so long together. It's like we going off each other's energy. He might say something, and I'm like, okay, nah, we, we flipping it to this. Or he might be like, uh, how many rock stars I got in the building? And I'm like, okay, we doing rock star. Mm. <laughs> or like cell phone lights up, bro. let's have a moment. And I'm like, okay, we doing intro. The, the record that I produced that went platinum, you feel me? So we kind of got our own cues, but staying organized and being prepared and ready to, to move. Yeah. That's cool, dude. Okay, so that's DJ. Now I want to get into what I really, I, I'm really like unsure about the difference for us. There's engineering and then there's being the producer. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between like production and engineering the record? So let's say engineering, to my engineer heads, uh, if you know what tracking engineering is, you feel me? It's pretty much recording the artist. You cannot put no, no plugins or no VSTs or whatever you use on there. Um, and then as a producer, you got like, you got a beat producer, you feel me? Or you got a, a loop maker, somebody that just makes melodies and doesn't really like to, to do drums. Uh, the producer community splits that up sometimes. Um, and then you got like an executive producer, somebody that takes the record to the studio, my engineer like myself, produce the beat, put an artist on the beat, you feel me? Figure out what producers might make the hardest beat, you feel me? And then takes it to the labels, you feel me, as an executive producer and, and drops the record. Something that I'm kind of doing right now. Mm. So That's cool, dude. So, damn, there's like a lot of different shit. I didn't, I didn't really yeah, realize so. the difference between the executive producer, bro. Because mm -hmm. I, I know, I, I do know though that like that shit makes a big difference. Uh, because, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you about your like, who, do, who the biggest, who, who, who's your favorite like, upcoming artist in a minute? But real quick, dude, I, I noticed that sometimes the upcoming guys, the new guys, dude, like they're not mixing their shit right because I feel like sometimes you listen to the upcoming people and like the voice doesn't sit above the beat, like the yeah. beat's above the voice, you know what I mean? Yeah, for so sure. So that, that goes to back to being like the engineering or the producer? The engineer, for sure, because mm. that's the person that's inside of the box or if they're using like outside components and, and plugins. Uh, Swigging the votes when it comes to compression or EQ or the reverb or the delay. You feel me? It's on your engineer to tweak all that for you. Mm. That's fucking interesting, bro. I want to learn about music, but we're not going to use this one for, <laughs> for that. <laughs> we had to tap in. I got you. Yeah. yeah hey, real quick, dude, before I ask you about who do you think the like the hottest rappers are right now, the upcoming people, or who, who you're listening to right now, mm -hmm. I just want to take a second, dude. Can, can we show off the fucking grill, dude? Show <laughs> I that, saw that when you first hey, came in, bro. bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for this. I'm talking to you. <laughs> like, the crazy. like listens. I'm like, damn, <laughs> I should have wore fucking shades. For sure. That's love, bro. They zoomed in on it. They zoomed in on it. We'll get the edit. We'll get the clip on that, bro. I can get these. Come on, get a little close. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so is that is that a grill or you replace the like your teeth? Is it like uh, it's it's like permanent grill, pretty oh, much. Oh shit! How does that work, bro? Is it like an like an implant or it's something? Like, or? It's like concrete. Yeah. What you, what you mean? Yeah, like concrete <laughs> on top of your teeth. And you feel me? You put the caps on there. It's like oh, getting veneers. Oh, veneer. okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like these can't come off. Like I brush my teeth, I eat food. Is there a special know. fucking toothbrush? Uh, no, no, no. But like a lot of maintenance when it comes to having diamond teeth, like every three months, every six months, you feel me? Yeah. They knock them off. They use this tool where it's like they punching me in the mouth. Oh, damn. They're like <clears throat> beating it out of my mouth and shit. That shit ain't. Are they replacing the diamonds every couple months or how does that I, work? I usually do. Like I okay. get my diamonds clean. Or let me not say every couple months because that would be like me throwing my money down the drain. But I get them clean for sure. Feel me? Mm. Get them like reset, replace. They mold my teeth again. You feel me? And make sure it's like custom to how my it's teeth might have shipped, shipped it. Dude, so on the grill, bro, how, how much? How much did you drop on it? What was the bag on the grill? Thirty racks. Thirty racks. Gosh, Damn. Damn. That's crazy. I mean, shoot, that's that's kind of where I make my money. Like as a DJ, what's coming out of my mouth? People watching me like on rolling loud screens, like my head torso up i'm like let me give you something to look at it's, it's marketing bro. it's more exactly. it's yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 i understand it that's real shit. book me for the grill <laughs> <laughs> yeah i want to stay on the topic of like dropping bags like i know you dropped 30k 30k on the grill bro so like whenever you got your first big bag you whenever you went platinum all that good stuff what was like the first couple of big purchases you dropped bro first thing i did was bought a crib for my family that's real yeah that's real shit. put my that was my bank you feel me if all this fails you feel me and i got a hop off of plan a which is being kid the king of development i got my crib to that i bought to take care of my family let me cash this in this is clearly me putting all of my chips in you feel me so yeah. how did that feel bro buying a buying a house for your family because that's like the family. ultimate goal for a lot of people bro like to see my mama's face to see like my siblings be able to be like or you feel me? my siblings didn't even really know what was going on but like to see the joy in them you feel me 
growing up in a crib that to me it was like a mtv crib if what if i would have seen that if i would have grew up in that i probably would be like a billionaire right now to this day bro but like having them it was more about the environment for me too though like what they grow up around you feel me like that's crazy bro like i said bro that's, that really is like that's typically the milestone everyone has whenever they they mm -hmm. typically think of like making it yeah buying your mom a crib bro Facts. but like that's don't it. don't get me wrong though you feel me i was definitely when i first got my first bag i was definitely young i was fucking off doing my thing but like i always had to be like level-headed bro like what if this is like becoming a producer and winning in the music industry is like getting into the league as a basketball this player bro this is like i don't want to say 50 50 like a three percent chance that i could be doing what i'm doing right now mm -hmm. you feel me like i could be in a different position so just moving strategically and, and with purpose with real emotion you feel me is longevity something that you kind of look for yeah i know a lot sure. of people get that window of opportunity and some get it longer some people get it shorter mm -hmm. What are some things that you do to help with longevity and keeping your career stays long, yeah. as fresh as you can? I would say, number one, like my team, Water Spectrum. Like, we move around like this everywhere we go. Ty T on the camera, Chevy snapping the pictures. a and any room that we in, and it's like dot connecting, shaking somebody's hand. Like, let me get your phone number, your Instagram, right. you feel me? But like, taking pride and branding myself through that and being able to have the young entrepreneurs around me that are like on the same type of time as me you feel me that go a long way because people recognize that type of stuff and they give them like a way to tap in with me but maybe they don't want to speak to me directly my homeboy ain't got motion you feel me chevy ty got motion you feel yeah, me come get a video team. yeah everybody you need right real there. talk everybody working man we on a we on a path to greatness like we got to be if we all working at the same time, so. Teamwork. Yeah. One thing I did want to touch on too is when it comes to like big hits, right? Like shut up is one, bro. When I'm in the gym, bro. That's crazy. Shut up is my shit, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. That's my shit. I ain't I'm heard nobody talk about shut up in a minute. That's bro, crazy. I still play that shit, bro, in the gym just cause like if I'm not feeling it, I took pre-workout, yeah. go through that breakup text, everything I need to <laughs> fucking up. PR, bro. That, that <laughs> shit don't work, you know what I'm saying? I put that song on, yeah. I get it. But one thing I want to ask is how do splits work like that? Mm -hmm. And how did it work to you? Did you go to the label? Does it go mm -hmm. to how did it work for you on your end? As far as split, so um, it's like two sides of that. An artist, you feel me? And everything that comes with that, like mechanical, royalties, publishing, all of that. Then you got the producer side, the writer side of things, which I'm on pretty much. So um, if I made the beat by myself or if I had a co-producer, it's like we handled the splits between each other. Me being like business savvy, I always did everything through Water Spectrum. So it was like I was contracting other producers. Got to pretty you. much be on the beat with me. Going to business with, with your lawyer first, you feel me? Then it's with the label, you feel me? But like me and Baby were always in the same room, so it's like, call your lawyer real quick. You feel me? I called my lawyer and then we handled the business. Right then and there, yeah. split, okay? Mm -hmm. Some people it's like, I can't act like, I've had other songs though, where it might be three months back and forth, lawyers back and forth, you feel me? Trying to figure out what the splits are, what's your points that you getting on here, what's the advance type situation. Trying to like nickel and dime everything. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, well, He tough. put this word in, yeah. that makes it But it's like, you kind of, I ain't gonna lie, me, I want to be like that. Like I'm reading every contract that I get. How, like what was a big moment when you realized like how dirty it was in the industry? Hmm. When I realized how dirty it was in the industry? I don't know. Every room I walk into for real, for real because you ain't got to talk to me like me knowing myself. When I walk into the room, I got a game plan. I'm on a mission, you feel me? I'm finna introduce myself, let y'all know who I am, do my work and get out of here, you feel me? We all like got our own motives, our own, like just looking at myself, it's like, I could be on a whole different path than what you want. Like you might be in here to roll the blunts, you feel me? So let me not holler at you, you feel me? Or let me say what's up, you feel me? But show and network and figure out how I'm finna get to this big opportunity in the middle of the room. Trying to get you to feel me? Yeah. Sense. So just analyzing that for real. And being aware. One last thing too. So I want to ask you, because we're talking about the splits and everything, royalty-wise, what is one of the best songs that you've had royalty-wise? And like, how often do you get paid off with that? Mm. Intro, for sure. Intro, intro and Lonely with Lil Wayne and Baby on it. Man, really, all of them songs, you feel me? Every every uh, four four months, you feel me, quarterly, BMI, semi-check, you feel me? Or- <laughs> Waiting on it. What, yeah, 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 we're talking, you feel me? When it hit, I ain't gonna lie, when you see producers be like that, BMI just hit, just know. Ladies, hit your man for them nails, it's time to get them nails <laughs> done. That BMI, you gotta get over yeah. it. Yeah. so, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to get a bag every which way though, so my eyes open every day, hustling yeah. as an entrepreneur. On a swivel. Yeah.
I love that, bro. On the same topic of getting it back, bro, I know that you're more than just music. I know we talked about it a little bit in the beginning, but mm-hmm. I know you got a lot of other stuff going on besides music, bro. So tell me a little bit about Water Spectrum. Tell me about the um, other water company you got going on. And yeah. uh, let us know, man. Let us know what you got going on. So KID, I'm, I'm everywhere with it for real, bro. Water Spectrum, my team of young creators. Young creators, you feel me, from Ante, Ty to Chevy, Sad, James, whoever I got on the team with us, Jerry Beats, this superstar producer, we pretty much do like all of the all of the creative services that an artist needs, you feel me? And like cater to the entrepreneurs at the same time. So say if you're looking to, to have like a Discord made or something, or you just want to get savvy on Web3, I'm like, holla at my boy Ant, you feel me? Cause I know very savvy in, in any lane that you put him in, you feel me? He either gone figure it out himself, you feel me, or like educate himself, you feel me, to be able to give knowledge to the next person. But um, just being able to share like my talents with people, like I'm a good marketer, you feel me, but I want to put like a marketer around me that's able to facilitate while I'm able to be DJ mm-hmm. Kid, you feel me? So Water Spectrum is all about just helping out the creatives, you feel me, curating playlists for other people, you feel me? Like if you wanted to, uh, an artist that's watching this right now, say you needed like, a rollout done or something, come holler at us and I'm gonna go look in your comments, Ant gonna look in your comments. Me and Ty gonna do like a, a lyric breakdown for you or shoot a music video or, or get your content. Everything that I saw work for me, I'm on like some rinse and repeat, you feel me, with the right person, you feel me, somebody that's willing to put a bag behind itself or just invest in their own dream and make that next step, you feel me. Then I got D for Water, which was K2O, you feel me. Me and Baby did that over like 2018 or 2021 when COVID hit. Sold out in my city, uh, but I went crazy. Like everybody were hitting the stores to get water and like toilet paper and stuff. And I had a whole warehouse full of water, you feel me? And I'm like, something is gonna run out. The water boy, I'm at the crib plotting like, yep, <laughs> I got y'all right here. But I saw it as a way to promote myself and give me a reason to make content and stay productive at the same time. And like uh, wrap my head around something that I know will be here forever, which is water, you feel me? And, and water is the way that I think about everything, you feel me? You put something in the middle of the water, what are we gonna do? Float around it, you put something, uh, water inside of something, you feel me? What are we gonna do, you feel me? Like, adapt to any situation that it is. So yeah. I kinda like try to apply that to every aspect of my life, for real. So being entrepreneur savvy, that's me, you feel me? If I can get a bag here, you feel me? I'm, I'm sure I could get a bag there, too, at the same time. Yeah. Especially if I got the right team around me. No, that's money. That's that's cool, bro. All the stuff that you got going on, and the crazy part about it, bro. I'm not sure if A and T ever mentioned to you before, mm-hmm. but the craziest part about it is I remember Ant going all the way to L.A. Like he's like, bro, I think I'm gonna move to L.A. Yeah. Like damn, bro, that's kind of like you know, no connection, no no people, no nothing. He's like, yeah, bro, I got to do it. I'm gonna make a connection. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it. Yeah. And then I remember him calling like, what'd you call like maybe two, maybe like five six months later, yeah. and he's like, bro. I think I met the guy, man. And then he yeah. was talking about you, bro. He was talking what? about Kid. He's like, bro, I met Kid. He was telling me all the stuff you guys got going on. Mm-hmm. Then he started talking about Water Spectrum. Then he started talking about, like, yeah. the gaming stuff you guys going on, the streaming you guys going on, all the stuff you guys got going on, bro. And I was yeah. like, damn, man, whatever you're doing, bro, <laughs> stick sick sure. right there, bro. So, Thanks. Yeah. For sure. Ant definitely got in the middle of it, you feel me? The fact that me and Ant met over gaming, like, GTA, literally when I was – Bro, my, my motive, like my mission was to get inside of GTA and cook up with producers in like Germany or like be able to get in the studio kind of how like they would be able to if they were here in real life um, inside of GTA. And pulling up in like track hawks and, <laughs> and challengers and cullinans and stuff on me to the studio. I'm like, bro, okay, this is what we doing. You feel me? I didn't, I didn't know Ant from nothing. Like I did not know who this guy running around the corner on GTA was, but I knew he had good energy. You feel me? He made good music and he was clearly like rolling the dice, sticking his neck out there. Everybody else in the server was kind of like, I don't want to say scared to speak to me, but Ant like came and got in the middle of that. Like, yo, what's up, bro? You feel me? What you trying to do? That's basically what it felt like. Like, what you trying to do? I do this. You feel me? I'm the jack of all trades. You feel me? Let me just get around. You feel me? And do my thing. So. That's so funny, bro. We're a fucking GTA role because he told us he's like, yeah, bro, the fucking the GTA, the uh, the role playing server. I'm like, what the fuck? That's yeah, crazy, bro. It's crazy, bro. bro. And the craziest, the funniest part, bro. The craziest part is earlier you, you said what? You said A and T connects the dots, right? Yeah, for sure. And like A and T, his whole mantra, bro. Like oh, the past couple years, bro. We asked A and T, bro, what's your job? What, what are you gonna do, bro? I'm a doc. Bro, don't worry about. It. I'm gonna connect the dots. Bro. <laughs> that was always his line, bro. For real. Yeah, man. <laughs> It does connect the fuck not, so yeah. That's crazy, because, like, I remember we were playing, like, the whole GTA server and stuff. People are like, bro, why are you stuck on that game for? I'm like, yo, 
Don't working. worry about it. And we, was we in here working. working. <laughs> like, I was in the studio with Kid before I was in the studio with Kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's crazy. So, I mean, and now this man is like engineer. I'm calling Ant, like, yo, <laughs> yeah. I got a session. You feel me? Can you pull up an engineer? He like, yeah, I'm getting out of bed right now. I'm on the way. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Bro, I'll be rolling out of bed like, Shh. all right, yeah. come on. Uh, shit. That's well, so dope, dude. What separates Ant, bro, from like other people? Because like obviously there's a lot of people watching at home. Maybe they're watching and they're like, they probably just search kid, bro. They're, they're trying to get more connected with you and they want to yeah. work with you. But what separates Ant and what he did from other people that you didn't get the opportunity like that? I don't know, bro. It's, it's Ant's drive for, for real. His drive and his consistency and just wanting to be positive and like, man, he, he's so savvy, man. One day, man, Ant, it was a time... Ant was wearing like hats and he had on like these these Cartier, you feel me, shades or whatever. <laughs> I remember and, that. I remember bruh, that. Man, art was, oh, Ant, Ant was in just like this this hustle mode. And I'm like, bruh, them is, those are the type of people I need around me. Why would I want anybody else other than this this type of person around me right now? And I'm like, okay, you got me so, bruh. Let's work. Let's keep going. When I'm up to 8 a.m. in the morning, Ant is in there with me. Like, we still in the studio recording. He's like, we done or we doing something else? feel me and he like all right you feel me okay i see you tomorrow what time you pulling up you feel me i love that bro you feel me push me yeah and that's real shit bro because i think you kind of just gave away like the key of how to find a mentor like if you're a uh, if you're somebody looking for a mentor like mm -hmm. you kind of just gave them the whole fucking play on how to how to find the mentor right and that works for any industry for sure. you know it worked with us we did the same shit we're just like fucking we're just trying to fucking go as fast as you can yeah and then the person that's above you that's gonna put you on game they kind of see themselves a little bit in you you that's, know what i mean i say that all the time yeah. i yeah. say that all the time bro and i'm like bro that same drive you got in here sometimes i get on ant like bro you feel me you a superstar bro you feel me walking that superstar you feel me and like we we kind of have like checkpoints with each other. Like I'd be like, Ant, you feel me? You posting on B Stars this week, or you, you posting on B Stars next week? It'd be like, sometimes what do we come to, Ant? You feel me? It'd be like, ah, I ain't really do it this week. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I'm on it though. You feel me? Like he got other avenues he in. You feel Accountability me? for real. Yeah, hold each other to that standard. That's a big thing too, though. Yeah, when time. you got people in your circle, you feel me? Are they holding you accountable? You feel me? Like if you told me you wanted to stop, like. You feel me? Somebody on the team right now, you told me to stop smoking, you feel me? Am I going to be like, every time I hit the blunt, pass it to you? Or am I going to be like, nah, you feel me? You could just let them smoke, mm -hmm. you feel me? Or you going to stand on business and see greater in them, you feel yep. me? Trying to get on their mission. So. And that's real shit, bro, because I feel like sometimes a lot of people in the come up, that accountability part, some people don't know how to fucking take that accountability. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know we've experienced it with like previous business partners where mm -hmm. my fucking can't take fucking... Um, I don't want to say a chirp, dude, but they can't take constructive criticism. So and, you know, and uh, sometimes, bro, I mean, those people are just not meant for fucking big things. You know, if you can't yeah. take that to the chin and be like, ah, no, you're right, man. I'm going to get straight, you know? Yeah, so so that's real shit, man. Uh, you've, you've been fucking dropping a lot of fucking bro, it's game, a, It's man. a lot. Like, because I, man, I be wanting, really what had put this spark in me was when an OG told me, like, you can't be a young dude with multiple platinum plaques and gold records. I'm like, bruh. You an old man telling me this? I'm finna go get it right now, bruh. And I feel like it's in your discipline. Like, if you stand on that with yourself, you feel me, and you wrap your head around discipline at a young age or, or whatever age you in right now, it's like, okay, if I can be disciplined and, and be head down, tunnel vision, and see it through, you feel me, I might get to where I want to be, to what success look like for me. Yeah. That's real fucking shit, man. Yeah. Uh, it's so crazy, bro, because um, on here, we, like, we've had a lot of fucking successful people, and it's so funny because it's always, no matter the fucking industry, you know, it's always, it's the same pillars, bro. Consistency, discipline, mm -hmm. take fucking criticism and, and grow, right. and um, have a positive mindset, bro. Like, always, like, when a door closes, you know, like, it's not really a door closing. Like, it's yeah. just getting redirected towards back to your path, bro. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you know, walking through your, in your own footsteps, man. So. Yeah. That's fucking cool, dude. That's so, that's fucking yeah. real no, it's, shit. It's badass, bro. All the all the all the game you're dropping right now, boy, it's crazy. Because I'm telling you, bro. Like everyone at home, they've only seen producer side. They've only and, and they know respectful in your own right, bro. You've done your thing in music. You know what I mean? But now the fact that you're doing your thing outside of music as well makes it even better. And for sure. you're kind of doing both of them at the same time, yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah, just trying hey. to expand, bro. For sure. Mm -hmm. That's that's what that's what it's about, dude. And uh, um, I know part of the expansion plans, bro. I know you guys have a big fucking event, you know, at the time of the recording tomorrow night. Yeah. Um, and I was telling Ant, you know, before I was like, bro, like you guys are kind of like fucking tapping into the world of like, uh, I know for us we go to like business conferences and shit, like same shit, network and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But you guys are kind of creating that space for like musicians, for like sure. artists. Mm -hmm. So it's fucking dope, dude. Uh, can you touch on that real quick? What you guys got going on tomorrow in Visalia? Yeah. So. A&T, man, this superstar, Jack of all trades, got me bringing a Wave Runners Festival to Visalia. Being that on the East Coast, 
where my vibe, where my, my following is, I'm out here tapping into like a whole nother world, another universe, the people that's tapped in the ant, in the A12, in a in a bug and, and all your yeah. homies, you feel me? I get to like mix and mingle in that community and see like where the love is at, you feel me? The people that clearly are looking for the next opportunity, which we're bringing with the Wave Runners Festival. So the, the opportunity that I felt like when I was younger that I didn't see enough of, or I was waiting for like the young entrepreneur that, that was doing it the way that I, I kind of wanted to get it the right way. You feel me? I want to bring those opportunities back to the community. For, for us. So, Wave Runners Festival. If y'all seeing this, tap into the Twitch, twitch.tv slash imdjkid. Run it back. Run it back. You <laughs> might find that next artist that you're looking for, for sure. Make a history for yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 I was just saying, tell us exactly what's going on in the Wave, like the Wave Runner Festival. What's the agenda? What's the schedule? Kind of run, run, run them through at home. Man, first thing is like, you know, whenever me and kids just be having conversations, they're like, yo, I talk about, you know, home, valley. He's like, what's up with the valley? You're always talking about it. Like, what's good with it? I want to check it out. I was like, you want to check out the valley? Like, let's put something together. So trying to think of a way, like, okay, how can I bring kids to the valley, but yet make it beneficial not only for us, but, you know, create some kind of wave, some kind of opportunity. So then, yo, what we did in the event? Oh, what called Wave Runners Festival. Kid gave me the idea for the name. I was like, that's actually hard. Let's do it. So we're really doing this to give an opportunity, not only for like the influencers out here or like the artists and producers, but anybody who really just trying to network and connect and just kind of, you know, make something happen for themselves. Not a lot of people at Kids Caliber come out here to Visalia in the Central Valley. So it's kind of cool, you know, to get him out here while he's lit stuff. Cause I know we have people come out here, but like, you know, years later after, you know, their time's passed respectfully. Yeah. So. Respectfully. You know, yeah, respectfully, you know. <laughs> so we put this together. Uh, we make it lit. I mean, we got like a little four-man, we're a four-man army right now with what we got out here with the people in L.A. So we putting it together, working every day, promoting it. And to see it, you know, we're like, what, 80% capacity of the venue? It's going to be crazy. Yeah, bro. it's, it's going to be crazy. And, like, man, tickets right now are going for, like, $30. We selling the $30 tickets. And people who normally don't even want to be paying, like, $10 mm -hmm. to get into the club, they're like, $10? and now you tripping. But, I mean, the fact that, you know, we're hustling, we're doing all this extra, like, footwork out here, it's cool, man. And yeah. then to be able to bring my brother kid out here, like, it means a lot because not a lot of people like to come out to the city for it. Yeah. And it's fucking big, bro. Because, uh, I mean, you, you, you touched on a lot of important shit right there, bro, because – um, you went out, you took the risk. Yeah, nobody to hold your hand, bro. Like, you went out there to fucking L.A. Like, you're like, I don't know what the fuck. You were, like, Ubering, door dashing, like, doing a bunch oh, of yeah. fucking random shit, dude, staying up at night, you know, all night at the studio. And then in the morning, you were, like, door dashing, doing all kinds of crazy shit oh, yeah. to, to make it happen, Got bro. accidents, 12 o'clock at night. Accidents, oh. Calls yeah. his insurance guys over here. At 12 bro, there was, like, a three-month <laughs> span, bro, where I was just gambling to pay my rent. <laughs> yeah, so, Straight quick up. Plug, quick plug. And, you know, get in an accident. The, one of the best agents here in the Valley. Picks up the phone, and, you know, what guys went through a process. We're always so. there for you, man. Academy West, shout out Academy <laughs> West. It's my issue. Um, so, dude, um, back to what I was saying, dude, you, you went out there, you took the fucking risk, you made a lot of shit happen, and now, bro, I mean, you, you're bringing that opportunity back where it's like, it's a, it's a win win. You know what I mean? It's a win win 100%. for, for our water spectrums and win win for the valley. Because, um, dude, you, you touched on something big, bro, that I don't know if a lot of people fucking realize it, but you're right. Not a lot of people, like at Kids Caliber, bro, like come out here. To try to put you on some fucking game while they're in the middle of their fucking like prime, you know, where they're still fucking working hard, bro. Like you get a lot of people that, you know, respectfully, you're like a little bit washed and it's not really relevant anymore, dude. So right. um, it's big shit, bro. Like, um, I don't know if you guys like realize the fucking impact that you guys are about to have in the valley, bro, but this shit doesn't really happen. You know, like you guys are so. fucking, you guys are fucking making a crack in, in fucking Central California. Like no one's ever really done it before, at least with the music, like with the music industry, bro. So I want to give you guys big props to that because you guys are that's about love. to change some fucking Appreciate lives, it. man. So Thank you, bro. Uh, yeah. that's real shit. Honestly, man, if you're watching this at home, you're probably going to watch this after the, the the festival already happened. But just know, tapping with the link, tapping with Outer Spectrum, tapping with Kid, with A&T, and uh, you're going to see how great it was after the fact it's gonna make you want to go to the next one man so if For you sure. miss this one make sure you don't miss the festival next time around whenever they come to the valley and uh, tap in with it man they put a lot of work i've seen it from the ground up from when you guys are first starting to talk about it to now and it's crazy it's about to go crazy tomorrow man so maybe we'll drop a couple of clips whenever this drops out oh uh, yeah how, how it went man oh yeah Tyson, you're gonna take care of that man oh yeah <laughs> I know you guys are gonna have it rocking, bro. Cause you that was that was, that was your main gig for a while, getting the club rocking, no? Yeah, did, right? yeah, so, for sure. I've seen some of the videos you post. I'm like, alright, that shit looks lit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get that shit rocking, bro. It get crazy, mosh pits and all. It's like different levels to this, for sure. <laughs> I'm sure people at home and myself included. I want to know what is someone in your position listening to right now? Like, what are the top three artists you're listening to right now? Right now, 
don't know. I'm big on the I'm big on the independent artist to be real. Number one, of course, baby, you feel me? That's that's my world, you feel me? Producing anything that he got going on, like I'm I'm number one on that, but to be real, I'm listening to to A and T. You feel me? <laughs> A and T. Real talk. It's real, bro. And is around me so much. Like I be so much in my own world. I be like, if you right here, right next to me, and you see this opportunity, and you promoting yourself just by re recording in front of me or making beats in front of me, I'm like, okay, that's what I'm clearly listening to when I'm in the whip. You feel me? On the on the way to wherever. So, A and T. Uh, my boy Skip to my Lou. He going crazy in North Carolina. Uh, and wisdom, notorious wisdom. He's he's a big artist on the rise on the East Coast for sure. Okay. For sure. So we at home tap in with them all. Those are all three top of the top artists, man, for sure. A <laughs> and T, man, that's so cool, bro. And what about collabs, bro? What what are the? I know obviously you've done a lot of collabs. You work with a lot of top artists. What are the top three artists you work with so far? I say, baby, the baby, Quayle Ray. And Lil Yachty for sure. And 2K Baby for sure. I got to give you four. 2K Baby, we've been like consistent for a minute. So, yeah. How's working with Coyle Ray, bro? Because I know that for me, that's that's one of my favorite artists, to be honest. Like, just, uh, just for me. How, yeah. how's, work, how's working with. Um, she a star. Yeah. She a star for sure. Like, <laughs> first time I seen her and we made the record that's going to be on my Waterboy project, I was just telling her, like, this is before she made. Um, no parties, like maybe a month right after that, like that shot through the roof. She was going like crazy on social media. But I'm like, bruh, cool, you a mega star, you a superstar. You feel me? Like walking your path and you feel me? I seen what happened with Koi. I see what Koi doing right now. Like she's walking her path. She's walking her path. She's doing that thing. Touch on that real quick, where you talk about yeah, you got a project going on right now. Yeah. So the the Waterboy project I'm working on, you feel me? It's Finna be bigger than ever. I've been working on my Waterboy project for about two, three years since like 2020, 2021. But a lot of big names on there. You feel me? To say a few: Quadra, DDG, the Baby. Mm. Oh, who do I don't even know if I want to say some of them names. I'm gonna say you want me to say? I'll say one. Drop, we gotta jump. Yeah, I'm a little bit. Jump a little bit. Say that. Yeah, Offset. Yeah. Offset. Yeah. You feel me? Got some, got some things in the works with uh, Devito on there. Some, some big names. I don't even want to say too much, but damn, all right, hey, that's it's great. around the corner though. Be it's ready. Viral. Yeah, be ready. We're gonna take over the world. I'm trying to make the world dance again. I'm trying to put the water back into your body. You feel me? You, you've been drinking soda and liquor your whole life. The water spectrum is bringing a wave, so be prepared. <laughs> all right, you guys. Quick break in between the podcast today. Just shout out to our sponsor, Fat Al's Bar, right here in Sanger, California. I'm telling you guys, man. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, anytime, any day of the week, man. They have the best drinks, the best appetizers. Tell them some more stuff, Dan. And look, man, they got the best vibe all in all, man. So if you're, if, even if you're not in the Sanger area, if you're Fresno, Reedley, Parlier, whatever it is, Delray, shout out my people in Delray, man. You got to come out. You got to check out Fat House, baby. That, that's the fucking spot. We it's got the spot. White Claws. We got the Modelos. They got the Modelos. <laughs> that's all that matters. I'm coming back for the show. I'm going to be here. <laughs> there we go, man. So big shout out to our sponsors, Fat House Bars, right here in Southern California. Let's get back to the pod. a t looking kind of like thick in those jeans, bro. <laughs> He's kicked what up, bro. You got to do a fucking show for the camera. You I kicked up, bro. Man, just, man, bro, and stop acting, bro. You swear, it's, you bro, swear I'm the only person that say some wild no, shit, bro. No, bro, but we need to sit here and stand on business, bro. You need to stop <laughs> acting like this is not the person that you are, bro. What are you talking about? Bro, I'm here to, I'm chilling, like... <laughs> What's your favorite foods? Favorite food? Yeah. Glizzy's. For me, bro, the... <laughs> Glizzy. Who the fuck said that? Yo, <laughs> your, favorite food is, your favorite food is what? What? I ain't saying Man, that. stand on business, bro. Say what you love. You feel <laughs> me? He's going to say booty, huh? Hey, Glizzy's is fire, bro. Y'all trip. Uh, <laughs> from LA. Glizzy's nah, sponsor on the way. I got clips of everybody eating a glizzy at, at some point. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always talking about what glizzies. What are you I'm plotting like, oh, yeah, on? What are you doing, yeah. bro? Was, what do you do with the footage, bro? Is that like well, a kink? Why is that living like, on your it's phone? It's in the vault. <laughs> That's for, for what, though? It's, it's a kink. It got to be a kink, kink thing. In case, be. in case shit get wicked, then it's like, okay, come on. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a kink. It's a kink, bro. No, a kink? No, Dang. you're crazy. What the? Plotting on this with these. The vault. That's a like vault. The kink vault. What do you think? What's yours, Dan? What would you say? Ah, fuck, bro. Even though I'm Mexican, bro, I fuck with lasagna, bro. Lasagna. Just just lasagna? Fuck. Wow. That was, that was unorthodox. I, said, I thought you was about to say something. Else. What was he about to say? I definitely thought you was going to say tacos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, went, Kim, Kim I'm went there, bro. Am I, am wow. I wrong? Am I wrong for that? Wow. You hear that shit? Hey, we gave him the Modelo. He went there. Uh, you know? I'm saying this. He gets a pass. Cool. Man. Cool. People, I mean, people ask me, man, I'm eating breakfast somewhere in California. I forget what I was at. They're like, you want some hot sauce? Oh. <laughs> for breakfast? Do I hey, want Chalula? some hot sauce? Bro, that's <laughs> what are you talking about? On my toast? Ketchup? I got toast, bro. I had like toast and like some eggs. You feel me? Oh, that's hot sauce. Yeah. Worth it. What, put hot sauce on the eggs? What? Uh, no? Would you put oh, oh, yeah. Like, my, Chalula, yeah, you said Cholula. Cholula. Hell yeah, that shit fire. You want me to tell you what's better than Cholula? Better than Cholula. Better than Tapatio. I don't fucking do it. You don't, even, you don't even like spicy stuff. Better than anything. Bro, you, the you best would, thing. If you say ketchup. Say it with me. Ketchup. No. Yes. Ketchup, bro. Ketchup on tacos. Ketchup on burritos. Ketchup on your eggs. Ketchup right, on tacos. No, there's not. There is like no fucking. Kid, am I weird for doing that or not? Is that not, like. Tell him. Keep, keep it 100, okay. kid. Keep it 100, bro. Be real, bro. <laughs> but but <laughs> tacos, bro. <laughs> there is no. Though, respect, man. Respectfully, hey, man. <laughs> Bad. But no. have you ever tried it? Have you tried it? Which which sauce are we talking about? Ketchup, ketchup, Yo, ketchup. 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 No, he said ketchup nah, nah, on not tacos. on not on everything. On tacos? Well, what do you put it on? We'll start with that. A burger, a uh, hot okay. dog, a burger. We'll some start fries. So you do eat glizzies? Oh, got it. Got it. I eat, I eat hot dogs. Fuck. I definitely got eat him. hot dogs. You feel me? That okay. You feel me? I be I'm on the waiting. grill. Let's talk about how you burnt them hot dogs, them glizzies on the grill. <laughs> how do you? Let's talk about that. Damn. Let's talk about how you burnt them. Better burnt a little bit. Like, bro, no. that's what I was saying, bro. They was like, eh, you burnt the hot dogs. I mean, dogs. okay, I'm okay, like, bro, just scrape, okay. Just scrape. I definitely, the shit I definitely off. like burnt stuff. I like burnt stuff, but I'm not eating a burnt hot dog, bro. I left N up there for two seconds. Nah, them shit, them shits was. Burnt. Burnt. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> I leave for 30 seconds. The heat on low, below medium. You feel me? I come back upstairs, smoke everywhere. The whole everything. You done. burn them on low and medium heat? Low, medium. I was on my phone. Just, like, definitely getting And then kid people. comes up, he's like, eh, what the fuck? And he opens it up, bro. I'm like, we got people oh, downstairs, shit. bro. We're hungry. Like, what's You're like, bro, all these people want to eat and shit. They're expecting the hot dogs and they burnt. I got to make more. I mean, I bought the hot dogs, so it was okay. <laughs> but what's, the, what's typically the vibe on tour, bro? Is it like, I mean, yeah, what is the vibe on tour? Like, for someone that's never been on tour, that's always dreamed about being on tour, what's the vibe with that? I don't that? know. It, it depends who you on tour with, if I'm being real. Yeah. I, was, I was on tour with the, with the hottest nigga in the world, you feel me? Like, my brother, too, at the same time. So, you got to be there to know what's going on. You got you to gotta be there. It's a lot going on, you feel me? You get good energy. You get to see the fans every day, you feel me? What happens after the show? You never know. I heard there's some crazy, crazy bus stories, bro, or crazy tour stories. Yeah, <laughs> we got some, we got some crazy stuff going on. You feel me, bro? I ain't gonna lie. Now that I look at you, Aunt, I might have seen you before somewhere else. Bro, I've never seen you before until I met you for the first time. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I seen a dude walking outside. It was like five fine ass females around him. But oh yeah, that was definitely me then. Yeah, hell yeah. I, when I think about it, bro, I wasn't yeah, right. by yeah. Sayer, bro. No, 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 that was me. I wasn't no, I remember. By in uh, that one city, uh, 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 Denver. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was actually yeah, Minneapolis. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was Minneapolis. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> what about in the in the studio, bro? So when you're making beats, when we're making making music, how's the vibe in the studio? And is there any like special traditions you do in the studio to make sure it's a it's a yeah. good session? Rule number one, you feel me? I need minions on the screen. I need to see minions. I get my inspiration from the minions. Wait, hold on. Like, that's <laughs> not even lying. He's like, like, that. I can see that. Like, the Gru shit, you're on, like, that Gru fucking time. Like, uh, yeah, you gotta see the minions. Gru, fuck that nigga, but the minions. <laughs> yeah. Minions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta minions. see the minions out there. Yeah, straight up. The yeah, minions. Shit. Like, a lot of my beats, you feel me? A lot of the inspiration comes from the minions and, like, Warzone, but usually the minions, the way they work. Uh, you know what? I think if anybody here was, like, Wondering like where your inspiration comes from, or like what do you say kind of like a ritual, like he was saying, mm -hmm. bro. I don't think any, I didn't fucking guess fucking minions. I'm yeah, yeah, the minions, bro. Hey, no, hey. nobody really. Unless you're like in the studio with kid, you'll know. But like, the sound yeah. off the right. On, uh, nah, the sometimes this blah, 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 blah. that's what the minions say. That's what I put in the beat. <laughs> that's basic. I play it when I hear it. So technically, the minions are transferring through me into the music. So you just got the fucking movie playing. That's yeah. cool. The movies, you feel me? Like the little short films and stuff. Mm. If I'm not doing that, it's playing the game or like, and and or say some off the wall shit. You feel me? And okay, I like make fun. a beat. That sounds about right with that. Because when you hear minions, what is the like language that you get from that? Like, can you understand Banana? the minions? I get like Italian, dude. Yeah, What's bro. happening, bro? When Offset comes into the room, you have minions on, 
You're telling him to hop on that track. What, what's, go, what's going through his mind? What's going through your mind? First of all, I'm vibing with the minions. You feel me? <laughs> so you feel me? If my energy give up the right energy in the room, <laughs> yeah. we about to make it. You feel me? If that beat smacking and he came in here like, yeah, it's minions on the TV. <laughs> we clearly about to make it. You feel me? I got him nodding already. I don't know what they're saying, but that shit hard. Yeah. You think kid, thousand likes? What do you think? A thousand likes? Nah, we That's should light. Lower, we should lower it. That's Maybe light. A hundred nah, that- <laughs> likes. A <laughs> hundred <laughs> likes. <laughs> yeah, a hundred <laughs> likes. Ten likes, bro. You know what I mean? Ten <laughs> likes? Fuck. That's hard. <laughs> Out of all of us, we're not going to get ten likes. We're not even ten people. We're not going to get bro. ten likes. Hey, so ten likes if y'all want a t to dress up as a minion. You feel me? No, I don't take no <laughs> You're gonna need more than that. You're gonna need more than the Modelo, bro. Y'all, y'all gamble. I mean, nah, I mean, you don't want to talk about oh, that. Yeah. We're, we're, we're fucking yeah. minions, bro. Say I, I already I ain't gonna get into it. You feel me? But hey, I'm trying to if, you, if you want to check out the kick stream, no, you feel me? This guy be getting money. You feel me? Uh, he, he, that shit is crazy. Yeah, he, he, how does that kick, dude? I mean, it's it's cool. Ant flies to Germany like every day. You feel me? <laughs> it's crazy, bro. He was telling me the same thing. He's like, yeah. oh, they got discount flights. We real talk. Takes I'm you like, like an hour to get there. Yeah, shoot, PJs. I'm trying to hop on one too with <laughs> you, bro. Yeah. Man, nah, that gambling shit is some whole other. Like, y'all don't want to see me gamble because it's it gets wicked when we gamble. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, what do you gamble? Do you gamble with like the people on the fucking screen, like where it's like real roulette type shit? Hell yeah, yeah, it's the online casinos for. You, real. you making like dollar bets and shit? You Doll- nah, what did we recently just do? Man, we oh. did a thousand dollar fucking blackjack hand and flip that shit. One hand? No. One hand. How much did you flip it to? Bro, well, we was really down, and then, so, 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 so no, like, I'll explain, I'll explain real quick. Gambling story, yeah. We did, we did, like, a cool, like, we both loaded in, like, 200 each. All right, cool. We got up to, like, almost 1,000, lost it completely, loaded up another 100, lost that again. That's DJ shit. If you load up again, you're a fucking degenerate. Oh, no, but, but, but check it out, though. Me and Kid were like, man, I think if we load up more money, we could win. I'm oh, like, bro, yeah. So, we both load up 500, 500, 1,000. And then we get up to like 13, 14. And then like, we're up right now. I'm feeling good talking to chat. I'm like, yeah, like y'all got to stop telling us to make stupid bets. Cause then we lose the money. And then like, now what? And then as I'm saying that he clicks on the thousand dollar chip. Yeah. And I'm just looking, He's like, God. I'm like, fuck it. You gotta roll the dice. Go do it. And we get a 17 dealer gets a seven, Ooh. pulls a 12. I was like, pull the 10. Oh, that was so the bad. 10. And we yeah we hit for like two a twelve two a twelve Damn. against a seven that's dangerous bro. yeah no yeah it was that's scary like your shit's puckered up yeah we were, oh, we yeah. were shaking <laughs> man shaking for sure man <laughs> you should have seen like when we loaded in the money because like when you load in through Bitcoin it take like a cool minute mm. so we're over here doing pushups and shit in the studio like preparing just, ourselves yeah but I mean shoot that's like rolling a dice we blackjack is like you might win this hand where you might not you feel me. <laughs> But I put my money in and see what was going to happen. 50, 50 I mean, how do y'all feel about, I don't know, even with what y'all do, for real, it's almost like you you low-key, I seen a quote the other day, you low-key got to be insane to be an entrepreneur to think tomorrow or next year, I might be up $100,000 or just successful, period. You mm-hmm. feel me? And you in the middle of like, let me say what, maybe poverty or like whatever your situation is and it doesn't look the best, you feel me? But as an entrepreneur, it's like tomorrow, I'm going to wake up and do this again, and I might get a little bit closer. Yeah. Dude, I mean, I think it's fucking true, dude, because I think you do have to have – you got to be a little – I don't know. Maybe crazy is not the right word, but it is. You got to be a little bit delusional. Yeah. And we were talking about this. Like, we're like, fuck, dude, we're not delusional enough. Like, we're not thinking fucking big enough. Um, but you do have to be a little bit delusional where, like, no matter your circumstances, like, I don't know, at one point, like, we didn't have shit. Like, I didn't have shit. I didn't have running water, no fucking electricity. But yeah. you got to be able to see yourself, like, inside of your mind. You know, you got to see you – fucking doing the big things that you want to do and i think that's super key because it's like going back to the shit you know you look at yourself in the mirror like you are the fucking superstar you know even if Mm -hmm. you know your bathroom is fucked up and it doesn't even flush like you know you gotta look in the mirror like (laughs) i'm him you know what i mean (laughs) you gotta believe that shit and you show up you know and then uh, that's big bro i think that's a big part of even starting to fucking pursue greatness you know you gotta believe that you are great you deserve that shit so for the real bro we appreciate you being on today bro for all sure. the game be dropped i know that everyone watching at home if if you have any game you're looking for you can literally rewind this whole thing and, and there's so much game you can from music to life to entrepreneurship to business just to being a good person all around bro sure. and so i want to end it off with one last question we always ask it's an all aces podcast official question um and it's kind of like a situational base bro where i want you to picture young dj kid like take you back before you had the tour before maybe even before college bro before you knew everything was going to work out yeah what's some advice you would tell young dj kid to get yourself through all those tough times 
keep looking at life as a season. You feel me? You got multiple seasons, bro. This season won't look like the next season. And the last season isn't this season, you feel me? Once one season ends, you feel me, the next season begins. So, like, your last season could have had tornadoes in it, but this season is the summertime, you feel me? Walk in that, you feel me? And and don't think about the past, you feel me, what what your last season was. Yeah. And and look forward to the next season because there's always something different in each each and every one of your seasons, you feel me? Yeah. Damn. Man. That's what I'm still shit. preaching, huh? <laughs> <laughs> sure. those, yeah, yeah. those church weeks are coming out, bro. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> but yeah, bro, the real world, we appreciate you being on today. We appreciate I you appreciate coming out by to Central Valley, man. Thank and uh, we appreciate everyone at home as well, always tuning in every single week to show us some love. And uh, we promise you guys, I to- told you guys, we always got the aces of every single industry, man. And today was no different. DJ Kid dropped some game today. Uh, tap in with him. Where, where can they find you, bro? I am DJ Kid on Instagram, on TikTok. On YouTube, DJ Kid one on one, you feel me? On Kick Ain't T D official, you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> nah. Yeah. I'm everywhere though. I am DJ Kid, the King of Development. Come tap in with us. Come tap in with Water Spectrum at waterspectrum.co. Or if you need some water and you drinking soda and your girlfriend Coogee smell like pickle juice, you feel me? Go tap in with D for Water on Instagram too. And I got you. <laughs> But you heard the man, man. So chat with him. Appreciate you guys hopping in today. And like we always say, man, we'll see you on the next episode. Peace. Yes, sir.